Are you a writer but you're not earning enough from your writings? Then this video is for you because in this video we are going to discuss how to get the most out of your writing revenue. A step-by-step -step guide. I'm going to tell you three ways that we're going to discuss in details on how you can maximize your revenue, how you can earn more, how you can price, and then also who is holding your money. Of course, my name is Chisum. Welcome to the gang. This is where we talk everything money, making the best out of our craft as creatives. Now, in today's video, I'm going to start with first, what is your biggest challenge with earning as a writer? Drop it in the comment. Let's talk about it, okay? I'm going to read every one of them and I'm going to respond after this video. So let me know what your biggest challenge is as a writer when it comes to income, all right? Now let's go. If you know that when I said, are you a writer and you're not earning enough, then let's go to how to make profit from this thing that you are so passionate about doing, okay? So let's go. First, who is holding your money you need to understand who is holding your money and who is waiting to give you money if you don't understand it then you will keep trying to sell to everybody and see trust me i've been there it's frustrating trying to sell to everybody believing that they are they all you know should buy from you and this is what people call in normal parlance your market understanding your market that is who you are called for and who is interested in what you're writing about okay now first how do you know that this is your kind of person? This is the person that will likely pay you without complaining, without thinking it's too high or too low. You know what I mean? Your right customers. First, who is reading your work? Who is reading what you're writing? Who needs it? Either for entertainment value or the educational value or the information value. Which kind of person is he or she? And when I say who, you have to be thinking about one person. Who is this person who reads your work or who needs to read your work? Who is this person your, who your work means a lot to? Either to their career, to their well-being, to whatever aspect of their life. That's who is holding your money. Now, but you know, we're not gonna rush there yet because somebody can also be somebody who likes what you're writing or who you're writing will benefit, but may not be able to pay you. Okay, so let's you know let's get that clear. So once you have put in your mind a particular kind of person who needs to read your work, the next thing you should ask yourself is um, what is the value that this person will get? Okay, so what does this person like? What does this person look forward to knowing? What is this person's pain point? What is this person's level of education, experience, exposure that will make this person want to get whatever I write at all costs? Right? That's number two way of determining who is holding your money. Another thing you should think about when you're thinking about who is holding your money is, is this person able to assess me? Again, can this person pay to assess my work if not how can i make them able to assess my work so these are questions to ask when you're thinking about it and you're thinking of one person it will become much more easier for you to distill so when you're thinking of this person and what they value how they want to assess you how much income level that they currently earn in a way that they can suit into your pricing then the next thing you have to do is then sit down and write the person like, oh, my ideal reader is, say, Mr. Obina. Mr. Obina is 28 years old, for instance. Mr. Obina is just a fresh graduate from school and who needs to get a good job and needs to make his CV uh, more professional. So he might need my book on expert advice on CV writing to expand or to, to get at the top of his career. You know what I mean? Now, Obina wants to get a good job because he wants to get a stable income so that he can start a family soon before he's 30. You know, things like that. Obina visits so, so, so social media platforms or reads these kind of emails. So that also gives you an idea of the platform which which wish to publicize your writing. Okay, now when you have done this, the next thing that comes to your mind is if he wants a CV done, is it possible that he might also need tips on how to attend interviews, job interviews? That might give you another idea for what to add to the work 
or another book idea to write for this kind of audience and also pay attention opener or whoever you you think about as your ideal reader also has to be somebody that you can relate with like you can know that is real and those kind of people are in millions so if there are people who are this age demand this kind of service and writing and will be willing to buy a book written on that aspect think again about the fact that is this thing widely needed are there people like that person all over the world this will also give you a larger perspective of your market i hope this was able to help right so this is how to identify who is holding your money and who can pay you and who needs what you're writing did you get me so it's very important to tailor your content to meet the needs of this your audience or this your reader or this your ideal customer because it will help you provide value for them and increase the value of your work as well in a way that they can put a price on it. They can pay you your due. Let's go to the number two uh, part of this. How do you diversify your writing income so that you can earn a lot of money? So you have a lot of streams or sources of income from the same writing that you do. Number one thing that people always look out, look away from is niching. What exactly or who exactly are you writing for? What is your niche? Are you writing to are you writing for businesses? Are you writing for fitness? Are you writing on um, health? It's very important. Most times I do not advise that you stay on just one niche, but niching helps you to know who to target per time. The way we have talked about this Mr. Obina and his path is to start a career and the kind of thing he will need. If you're also writing on health, you have to know who am I addressing. So for me niche, if it's health, whose health? Is it women's health? If it's women's health, is it women of childbearing age or those past menopause or those just approaching puberty? You get what I mean? You get what I mean, right? So you have to be very, very determined about who you are writing to niche down, be specialized, be somebody that people know that when it comes to this kind of writing, fitness, wellness, and all that, this is the writer to get. That is one way you can market to people whose goals or whose businesses are of regulation or are towards the fitness and wellness industry. So you're not beating about the bush looking for people in different industries who may not need what you are writing. Number two way is to freelance. Go ahead and identify all these audiences that you need to pitch your services to and specifically pitch to them, of course. It, it starts with the first one I'm saying. So freelance your services. Don't be stuck up. Also look at platforms that you can you know, use to make yourself popular. Globally, people use platforms like Fiverr, Upwork and the rest. But also look at other aspects in your locality, in your in your own country internet, if that's your market. Look at where to get the bulk of the people who will need specific type of specialized writing and reach out to them. So the next way to create multiple sources of income is to begin to blog. So let's say you've been writing for years and you know writing for customers. Can you begin to put your writings into a specific blog? So you have a, a blog that is niche specific. So people know that when they come to your blog, you're going to, going to read about politics and they're going to read all your thoughts in different angles and different perspectives on politics. Or your spec is lifestyle or family life or relationship or you know whatever it is make sure that people can come and find the whole body of your work in one space that becomes easy for also the search engine to optimize and index and then you begin to get hit when you set up your blog right of course if you want me to do a, a deeper video on how you can set up your blog that will rank well on Google let me know in the comment section now so when you set up your blog it's easy for you to begin to attract specific kind of ads, you know, through AdSense, through other ad, um, ad revenue platforms, and then start earning income. You can also begin to be approached by brands for brand sponsorships and all that. So make sure that your blog gets to the point where you can monetize it. <laughs> I just was, as I'm talking, I just remembered one of my blogs that I archived about um, five years ago or so. Um, 
it just started monetizing at that time i still have about 26 dollars left there <laughs> when google sent me that a lot last year in 2023 and said i have pending i have like an income there but it's not possible for you to withdraw it because it's not up to 100 dollars and i'm done with the vlog anyway but that's by the way so you can monetize your blog right you can monetize your blog i've been blogging since 2009 when i started my first business of editing so i know what you can do with blogging all right a lot of people have an idea that blogging is dead blogging is no longer is not true it is not true right okay and with blogging it's very easy for you to do affiliate marketing as well it's also also um, easy for you to do direct ads so people just you know send you their ads you post about them all of that sponsored post all of that so that way you are making money from the people reading you and from the ads okay another way you can identify your income is think about writing a book i mean you've been a good writer but you have not authored a book yet then think about doing that this year you can only start from the low hanging fruit start with ebooks valuable ebooks that you're going to give good marketing i don't mean just writing it and then nobody knows about it so again before you write ebooks or books make sure that you're niche specific you identify who you're who is holding your money understand who that person is and their needs so that that book will contain exactly what their pain point what they are yearning for do you get so that when you announce your book and the content or rather the outline or the chapter they're like oh my god their eyes will pop like oh my god i've been looking for this for a while so don't just write a book out of writing a book Another way income stream, of course, you can also look at is having membership programs. I used to have membership programs back in 2018 and I used to do it on WhatsApp. You can't believe it. So people sign up for a specific amount and I, I coach them every day for one year. Yours mustn't be one year. It can be three months, it can be six months, but a membership is something that you can bring people, a platform you can bring people on and then you coach them towards a specific result till they achieve a specific result so don't just create membership for membership sake it can be on the platform it can be on a website it can be on an e-commerce site whatever it is but make sure that you understand the aim and you're using the right platform for the right people and the right content right and also i hear about patreon i've never used it before but patreon seems to be a very good platform to also create membership okay so that way you give people exclusive content that you're not giving to the general public that way they know why they should pay for it and they subscribe for it so these are some of the you know other streams of income but there are lots of them there i have like eight or nine others but if you want me to make a, an exclusive video giving you all the aspects that you can consider on how to make extra income as a writer then drop it in the comment and i'll make that video right about now maybe after this video right if i get a comment let's go to the third part of this video now let's tackle pricing which is a key aspect of monetization pricing is something that creatives all around the world that i know struggle with like <laughs> i don't know it's, it's real it's real people are stuck on how do i price myself and the fear is i don't want to underprice myself which is usually where people go to do people always creatives always on that okay even people who are technical i would say that most people who are creatives and technical people are usually not business people in that sense so uh, it's something you have to learn you have to learn it all right most people always underprice their craft. When you underprice your craft, people will also undervalue what you bring as a writer. And also, you don't want to overprice yourself so that you don't pursue people who are prospective customers or clients from you, okay? So how do you price yourself that you don't feel guilty or you don't feel helpless or don't feel frustrated while doing the job after the negotiations or you don't actually wonder where have all the people gone to because your price is too high so that's what we're going to deal with finally so number one thing to do if you want to set a winning price is search your industry market now not just specifically your own um your, your own customers research and find out what are other people other writers charging for specific kinds of writing so you can't just be a lone ranger you can't just say oh okay so this is what i think it should be you might just you know get people wondering oh my god she might not be so good her fee is so low or you can get people thinking oh my god why why is that you know and then they don't come back so understand what other writers like you are charging 
in your country, in your continent, and globally as well, so that you can use it to compare and benchmark. This is very important. I remember when I started out business in 2009, I was a lover of Google. I hugged Google with all my heart. I, I searched for everything on Google, like how do people price, how do people decide their, their turnaround time, what do I name my business, all of that. And it was so helpful. And today in 2024, that business still runs. So you must know what other people are charging so that that doesn't mean you're going to set your price to their own price exactly or follow every of their step. It just gives you an idea of what's happening in your industry and so probably what your customers or prospective customers have gotten also as, as fees. So, so you can put your fee around the mind range of what they're looking for. Now, let's look at the second way you can set a winning price. That is by valuing your skill valuing your skill. Let me say something here. A lot of us creatives, because writing comes to us almost naturally, we love it, we can do it for free, we've been doing it for free, we feel very guilty to put a price on it. If you have been following me, you know that I, I subscribe to the fact that God gave every one of us our multiple billionaire skill so that it can come easy for us. He gave us those skills to survive so that we can achieve his aim on earth. And why he gave it to us, he might have given you writing, another person's own might be negotiation, another person's own might be marketing, another person's own might be another thing, but you shouldn't then minimize yours or undervalue yours just to please another person. So you're supposed to make your million dollars consistently from what comes easy for you. You understand what I mean? So that you don't undervalue your skill. Now, when you understand that, you know that the things that come to you easily are your gold mine. They are your low-hanging fruit. They are your cash cows. So, value your skill. Somebody who cannot write to save their life struggle a lot and may never write or express themselves if they don't have you or people like you in their lives. So, make sure that you understand the infinite value that you bring. And writing is part of creativity. Creativity cannot be caged. You can't say, oh, so this is great writing or this is the best writing in the world because part of creation is infinite or infinite how is it said okay so value your skill when you value your skill you will factor in your experience how long have you been writing Yo, do you understand that's how to know whether you value your skill how long no, no, not that you've been writing for over 14 years and you're pricing yourself like you just said one year ago factor in your experience also think about your expertise and your niche so you've been writing on a specific kind of specialization for years. You're known around it. So why charge peanuts? Another way to know whether you're valuing your skill is know the quality of your work. People must have told you, giving you powerful testimonials of how your work helped them. Help them, their website, help their blogs, help their businesses. So factor that in and that helps you make sure that you're valuing your skill. So you've seen what other people are charging. You have also looked at your experience, your skill, and your and the impact of your work. The next thing to do in fixing a price is consider how much you spend in the time that you're going to be writing for this client. Consider your cost, internet, time, phone, phone calls, the value of your laptop, your time, and your brain, and your health. All of that, with, if you're going to write for somebody for three days, for instance, what are the costs? that needs to happen for instance if your laptop is not powered by electricity for those three days you may not be able to deliver that work so value in a percentage of your light bill the cost of your laptop the your time amount of time you have to sit down to concentrate on that work pay yourself for those hours factor them in and use that as a percentage to add to what you are charging did you hear me the time and resources you spend while doing the job has to be part of your pricing. That is number three. Number four way, and we are still talking about how to set winning prices. Now, the fourth way is how to is communicate your value. This person has come to you with a writing need. Do you just say, oh, right, we'll do it for you. Have you been able to tell this person how much expertise you have, what other people have said about your, about your work, what they are going to get at the end of the exercise, the value that you bring. You must be able to communicate your value, help your client to understand the value that you bring to the table. You can't just leave it and say, oh, they know, we are writers, so they need a service. No, you must let them know what to expect. Blow their mind, prepare them for the awesomeness that you have. It has a way, yes, it has a way of making people relax and pay you your fee. 
in case you don't know. But if you come beggarly, you're not promising anything. Ah, people might hope you doubt. Are you sure she knows what she's doing? Are you sure he knows what he's doing? I know this company. Something about this company feels off. I don't feel like they have the value that they are promising. Yeah, so don't do that. Then lastly, he's deciding strictly the kind of clients you want to serve. This can be a bit tricky because people say, oh, how? But the truth is you you decide the kind of clients that you want by choosing the market model that you want. Let me explain. You, you, you can decide that you want to write for the masses, the larger number of people, you know, people who anybody can almost afford that fee. As long as they have a writing need, they can come to you. So the masses, that way, at the masses level, your fee has to be very minimal, very, very affordable, so that you have a surge of people who can get their writing done through you or through your agency or through your company. You can also decide to serve the middle class, maybe the working class level, people who get paid on a monthly basis or people who do their own business as a startup, right? People who have some substantial amount of money, but they are not so wealthy in that sense, but they are also not looking for very cheap quality services. You can decide to serve those people. They will not be as, small, as much as a number like the masses, but you get a substantial sum. Then you can also decide to, to serve premium people who are companies, businesses, big time Fortune 500 companies. You might just want to get retainership in such organizations or serve high caliber CEOs, captains of industries who are very busy but they need you to write for them because they need to document their legacies and stuff like that. So if people at that level, money is not their problem but time is. So if you give them your time, they are willing to pay you to get their work out there where they are busy focusing on what they are doing. You know what I mean? So that is almost like understanding your customers and that also helps you to communicate to your to your ideal customer how to also treat your, your business or your services. Now, when you consider these six aspects, you should be able to sit down and say, okay, for a 300 word, say, website content, this is how much I'm going to charge for I'm going to serve the fintech industry or I'm going to serve the business and consulting industry or I'm going to serve the health and wellness industry. You know what I mean? So you go to specific things, find out what people generally charge, find out, factor in your value, factor in your cost. Do all of this analysis, decide which kind of fitness industry do you are you looking at, then you will be able to come up with your pricing. So whether your services include speech writing and all that, or website writing, whatever it is that you decide to do, or you're writing a book, you know specifically what your prices are. And the good thing with pricing or deciding your prices this way is that you will also be able to defend it. You're not going to be shaky. You're not going to be easy shaking when people ask you for discounts that you flip out a whole 20% discount for them because you already factored in what this money should be for, right? If you know that they're covering your laptop and your bills and all that and you, all those percentages also must also be kept when you're paid for those specific things. So this is one way to, to create an awesome, awesome, awesome strategy. This is a journey. So you have to keep improving on yourself, learning, adapting, be flexible, and until you get the sweet spot where you're comfortable, even when you're comfortable, because there's inflation every every year, things are changing every day, things are not going to becoming cheaper, they're becoming more expensive. You have to keep increasing your prices at the right time and getting your marketing on point. Okay, this has been an exciting time. Let me know which part of this you're going to handle immediately to beef up your writing career income. And I'll come to you again in another video, bringing you all that you're looking for to make sure that you can make the most out of your career money-wise. Okay, until I come your way again, remain fantastic.